Right guys, I thought I'd just show you what I'm up to here. Um, basically they put some cement on the, the little piece of metal that's around the bottom part of the door. And the cement was literally falling to bits and cracking. So what I thought I'd do is I would rip it all out and do it myself. As it seems the cement I use is 10 times stronger than the stuff they used. So I'm in the process of just creating a new little ledge and on that ledge I will put some beams of wood to create a frame for the door which will go around here and down. Um, and then we can attach it to these beams that we've got here. One beam there and one beam over here by the, the window. So that's the idea anyway. Um, we can even create a second door on the inside off those beams if we want to. So I thought I'd show you what I'm up to now. Um, so I just need to leave that cement to go off for a couple of hours. No more than that. And then I can start forming the actual uh, shape of it to make sure it's level. And it's, I may put a little curve on at this end here just to stop any sort of possibility of it cracking. However, that's what I'm doing here. Um, you know, sometimes when other people do work you can find out that they don't do a great job and you have to do it yourself again so that's what I'm up to here so we'll just let that set for a couple of hours and then uh, I should be able to mould it myself Hi guys I thought I'd show you where, where I'm up to at the moment with the uh, door installation and framing so I thought I'd just show you what I've done with the battens in terms of creating a door frame so basically this is what I've created so far so let's start off with explaining what I've done here so basically we've got large screws going through the frame to lock it in place I've put battens that link the existing battens that I've just recently installed um, off the garage wall with, with the brackets as you can see we've got those brackets there um, to secure the battens what I've done is basically screwed into the side of the frame with, and put a bit of glue in as well and screwed in these little corridors where I could get the screw in and it's gone into the batten like that I also glued it as well so we've repeated that I did that three times here um, mainly because if I try and move this it's solid. I've also put a piece of wood at the top that is actually going into these um, beams that run across the garage. Let me just show you how thick they are. The beams are about that thick as you can see. Um, they're about two inches thick so obviously we've got one of the battens that's um, screwed into that and then another Obviously the frame button here is screwed into that button that I've screwed onto the actual existing uh, beam that run the, runs across the back of the garage. Um, so that's essentially what I've done there. Um, we've done the same over here. Um, obviously um, put a button running across. Another one here, another one here, another one here. Um, it, it, there is a bit of play there however. The main reason for that play is quite simply put, we have um, to basically have a little bit of room here because as you can see there's a metal uh, bracket there that allows that door hinge to connect. So if I just show you, that needs to have some room there. Um, unfortunately um, it, it takes a bit of room up. Um, and what I've also done is on here I've put a bed of um, cement. It's about one and a half inch thick cement and what we'll probably end up doing is waiting for that to harden. Um, they, they say after three days it should be hard enough but I want it to give it some extra time to cure. Uh, curing can take up to 28 days so I think we'll leave that probably two weeks before I think about drilling into this. Um, and then that will obviously give us a bit more rigidity once I've screwed into that 
Um, but in essence, that's what we're up to at the moment. Um, so the next stage is going to be putting some insulation in the gaps, cut it, make sure it fits, um, and then do a bit of foaming. And that's essentially what I'm up to with the battens. I just wanted to explain the battens a little bit in terms of the doorway because it's it's a bit of a challenge um, because I had no way of fixing this onto the concrete or the door. Um, when I looked at the door in more detail, um, it looked to me to be quite complex. If I was to start drill into that, there's no guarantee that the, the, the screwing into metal would get me a solid bind. Um, so what I've decided to do is obviously just frame it and attach it to the other buttons. As you can see, it's, there's very limited ways of securing the buttons to the, the metal frame. Um, I could have drilled into it, however, I didn't want to do that because drilling into steel isn't easy uh, with screws. Um, it's not the drilling, the hole is the problem, it's binding the frame to the steel. That, that was the issue that I was contemplating. So this is the way I've solved it, um, using some batten braces. Now over here, because they're quite short, there's virtually no play at all in that side. Um, but over here, I just shut the door because the auto balance is getting screwed up. Um, over here, the buttons are quite long, and that's what creates creates some of the play. As you can see, it can actually move it. Um, so we need to secure that there. It might not need that once the plywood goes on, because the plywood obviously will, will give it some strength as well. Um, but essentially, I'm going to start putting the insulation in now, um, and then we'll get, get the plywood on. But essentially, we're getting there. I want to get this side done as quickly as possible, so I can put the shelving up. Because um, that's the, the main reason that I started doing this in the first place, really. Um, but it's given me a reason to get it done. So I thought I'd just uh, show you what I'm up to. Right guys, I thought I'd just show you what I'm up to at the moment. So, we put in the Kingspan installation in the various sections, fitting it as best as I can, but you always not be able to fit it completely, properly. Um, so what you need to do is remember to get a can of expanding foam and fill in the gaps like I've done here. So, the form I chose to use is this Soldal gap filling expanding form. It's yellow in colour, it does a good job, and this is quite a large can. I think it was £7.50 for a 750 gram can. Um, you will go through a lot of these cans doing this project. So, if I was to say what you might need for a garage of this size, probably about 20 to 30 cans. Um, so just to show you that I've locked it in place um, with the expanding foam. So obviously your cutting might not be perfect and just use the foam to lock it in place and then you'll make sure that it's secure. It doesn't matter if it spills out a little bit, you can pull it off, no problems. Um, and that's what I've done here basically. Um, I've also put some expanding foam in the gaps here, as you can see there. Obviously it's spilling out a bit here. I have the habit of doing that because of gravity. As you can see the expanding foam is slowly squeezing out a little bit. But one added bonus of using expanding foam is it, it tightens up everything and makes it a lot more rock solid than it was previously. So it's, it's like a brick wall and it binds together and it gives you a lot more rigidity in your structure. So that's where it stands at the moment. There's a little bit more to do. Obviously we've got to put some uh, plywood on but I just wanted to show you where I'm at at the moment. This is almost finished so let me just step back so you get more of an idea. 
So a lot of people commented on other videos that it wasn't completely finished and I would lose some heat because of the massive area here not being completed. And that's completely true. So we're rectifying that at present. I will put a little bit of insulation. We've got some 25 mil that will go in the door. So let's just pull the door to so you can see the door. So we've got some 25 mil that will slot in there. And you've got a few options, obviously. You can plywood it all if you wanted to. But it might be a lot of faffing about. And what I'm thinking about doing is just putting some foam on and then using some of that silver tape. You can buy silver um, tape just like the um, foil that's on the back of the Kingston panel um, insulation. And I might just tape it up and leave it at that. Doesn't have to be perfect to end at day. Um, and if you wanted to, you've got the option of putting like a uh, internal plywood door there. Um, that would obviously add extra insulation. Remember, this is something I want to talk about. Wood has an insulation value all of its own. Um, so in theory, you could line the entire um, garage with um, wood and you would have a pretty decently insulated garage um, however you know that would be expensive so that's why we use insulation these days so um, obviously let's briefly talk about what we're doing with the garage door I've ordered some um, 100 millimeter thick uh, polystyrene which in order to get the same sort of value of insulation such as we've got here, we've got 40 mil, but you can get 50 mil um, insulation, Kingspan or Celitex insulation. Um, the value of that insulation versus polystyrene insulation is that's double the density and twice as good. So to get the same sort of insulation value, 50 millimeter, you would have to buy 100 millimeter blocks, and that's what I've done. So we've got some 100 millimeter blocks I'm going to put here and we'll show you that in the next video. Um, I just wanted to show you where I'm at the moment. The idea is we're going to block this end of the garage. Why would you want to do that? Why not use more Kingspan and more battens? Well I want to retain the door in terms of its usability because you never know you might move house and you might want to sell it as a, as a garage or a converted garage or whatever you wanted to do. In order to do that, we uh, need to have access to the front door. So what I'm going to do is put some blocks of polystyrene insulation, which is really thick. We're looking at probably that thick in terms of blocks, which is about 10 centimetres thick, 100 millimetres in millimeters and we're just going to literally block this off and it'll be a completely insulated garage then um, you know and obviously we are 10 times warmer than it was um, because you're always going to lose heat out of this area and heat out of this area once all this is insulated we're not going to lose that heat so I thought I'd just uh, do a final video to show you where we're at um, once I've got the plywood all installed and we've got the, the white sheets and it's all looking nice, I think we'll do a final video. Um, but let me know in the comments if you would like me to do another video after the plywood's installed and show how that looks in, in previous to me getting hold of the polystyrene because that's coming on Monday. Um, I've ordered four sh massive sheets of 2.4 metres by 1.2 so they're absolutely huge and I'm hoping four sheets will do it. Um, however, we may need to buy some extra ones. As said in a previous video, um, I've installed a new circular light because I had in mind we were going to use some polystyrene blocks here and a long beam of light like we've got over here would have um, probably impacted on the ability to uh, install it properly. So that's why I decided to change a few things. Um, and obviously on here we're going to have the CCTV system on some shelves 
and uh, I'll be able to keep more of my pond equipment. Uh, incidentally, if you're watching this video on my Technology Advisor channel, please go over to my Yorkshire Koi YouTube channel. There'll be links in the description box um, because I do, do run a, a YouTube channel all about pond keeping, building ponds and that sort of thing. I also run another YouTube channel called uh, Canon Lenses and Cameras. There's a Facebook group if you're interested in photography. Um, I'll put links in the description box for that as well. Uh, as I said, we've got a large Facebook group, good community, good people on there for the uh, camera equipment videos that I do. Um, so essentially, that's what we're up to at the moment. Just wanted to show you what we're up to. A lot of people have been keen and interested in these uh, renovation videos I've been doing because... When I started, there was no content on YouTube about doing this. Uh, all I found was two photographs, and that was it. Obviously, a lot of people have jumped on the bandwagon and been uh, copying what I've been doing and putting their own videos up. Not as quite as comprehensive as what I've been doing. Nevertheless, it's nice to see people putting content up um, about their renovation projects because it helps other people figure out how to do things because I have no doubt that many of you on the YouTube community had no idea about how to fix the buttons on to concrete panels um, there's very little information about how to do it obviously I used my bracket system uh, please check out previous videos about how they look and how I got to do them Part 1 will probably be the best one video to look at for that. And then obviously we had to sort the electrics. The electrics was very complicated, very complex. I had to be extremely careful. Whenever dealing with electrics guys, remember to turn all power off. You do not want to electrocute yourself. Um, so that's what I did. Turned everything off. Remodeled this. That box was loose hanging off um at one point obviously it was on the 18 mil plywood that was attached to the panel all they do done and screw that in between two panels not the best solution to do that um you shouldn't really try and drill into or screw into concrete reinforced um steel panels and um, because you can damage them because they're, they're very brittle, the concrete panels. They're not that strong. Um, so drilling into them is not an option. I uh, highly recommend you never drill into the concrete panels on Apex garages if you can help it. Um, so that's essentially what we've done so far. Hopefully you found this video informative. If any of you guys out there want me to do a, a new Q&A video about costs, how to go about doing things, I'm more than happy to share my knowledge and, and uh, hopefully you find these videos informative. Right guys, so I thought I'd show you where I'm at here. So, as you can see, I've uh, formed it all in and I've come up with a solution for the issue that I had here. I don't know if you could remember in the previous video, but this foam that I put up, I cut it at an angle to, and I made a bodge job of it basically when I put it in instead of, instead of leaving it like this as a, um, a sheet, squared sheet, I basically cut it. So what I decided to do is put some plywood up here and foam in behind that fills this void up. So that sorts that little problem up. So over here I thought I'd just show you what I've been doing over here, um, setting up the shelving units basically. So we put in the brackets that run down with the uh, shelving supports. Um, fortunately, I didn't order enough, so I've got another three coming. So another three of those are going to be coming, and we can obviously get our four shelves installed then. And uh, it's coming along, don't you think? So that's what I've done over here. Over here, and I've got a bit more plywooding to do over here, and a piece over here. So what I did is I, instead of basically ordering a huge piece of uh, Wix's. Um, the delivery charge isn't that much, it's only 7 quid. I went off to our local hardware store called B&Q. Uh, just before I continue talking about that, I'll just talk about how I cut that out. Basically I just got a, a, a jigsaw and cut it out, made it 
fit quite nicely so as you can see that's that's looking all right um so yeah back to the b and q story um basically i went up to b and q with some sizes of um pieces i want to get cut and they cut the pieces to uh, my specifications so we've got some pieces of wood to finish this area up um i didn't really want to go to the expense of getting another two pieces and then trying to figure out what i needed so i just went up there and uh turns out that one piece is all i needed so we've got some pieces of wood cut and i'll show you that in a moment so here is a selection of pieces of 12, 12 mil wood um I, I try to get lots of pieces of wood from like ma marketplace on facebook but um really people wanted too much money really so basically i went up to b&q with some sizes here uh one cut which was 85 by 49 centimeter another one which was 85 by 118 and another one that was 114 by 69 um i was trying to figure out if i could get a whole piece at 190 by 69 at the top and 71 at the bottom but it would use a majority of the wood so i thought right i tell you what just get the three top ones instead so the gentleman at b and q over in leeds did a really nice job cutting this up for me and uh, we'll install that in the garage shortly right guys i think uh, i have more or less finished in here so i thought i'd show you what i've done um obviously i plywooded it all the way around um obviously done the roof elements as well um done a lot of um expanding foam in the top part there above the uh door and i'm just waiting for some brackets to turn up to finish the shelving unit that we've uh, sort of semi built here so i thought i'd just show you that obviously this is this is what i've done with the plywood i made a bit of a mistake with the cut on the plywood there but i thought bollocks to it i've spent enough i'll just leave it like that for now um obviously i've used as much um plywood as possible um if you're interested guys pop over to b and q in the uk that's if you're in the uk and they do offer a cutting service right that can save you quite a bit of work um if you can't be bothered cutting it yourself um so i thought i'd just show you what i've done so far we've just filled in the boards really um obviously here is a, a cement um, ledge where I've built a frame now if you've seen the other videos that I've done you'll know that this was a bit this was a bit loose but look at it it's solid so what's made that solid quite simply put expanding foam in there um, so if we just show you I've got expanding foam all the way on the inner part where there was a bit of a gap and the reason I had to leave a gap was because of these um, door hinges that, that go on there. And there's another one further down here, as you can see, going there. So I, I've cut a recess into the wood. Uh, so if we have a look, as you can see, there's a recess in the wood there. And that allows for the, the door to shut properly. Um, at the moment I've got some cables in the garage so I'll, I'll do that later and show you but um so i'm gonna put some expanding foam not expanding foam sorry some sheets of 25 mil in here um and then that that will more or less finish off the door um so essentially we're more or less completed next stage obviously is to uh tidy up the garage a little bit uh, but I thought I'd just show you what I've done so far. And uh, yeah, it's coming together now. All the hard work has paid off. <laughs> uh, so I'll just show you the rest of the garage uh, while you're here. Yes, it's a bit of a mess of garage, but you can see I've done a lot of work. I did some shelving units here. And the only part I haven't completed is the door. But we're going to put something in, in that. I'll do that in a separate video. And I'll show you that 
But um, yeah, it's coming along guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think I've done a good job? There's basically when I started doing this, there was nothing on YouTube, on the internet, on how to do this. Now, lots of people since then have seen my videos and done their own projects and uploaded their own little videos. Um, but I don't think there's anything as comprehensive as my videos are. Um, I've done hours and hours of video footage showing you how to do it. I even upgraded uh, the long lights. I have one over here to show you. One LED light there. Now I did have another one here but I upgraded it to a round one. So I can put something in the far wall here to insulate the garage completely. But I just wanted to show you what I've done really. So there you go guys. Uh, so we've got a pool room, pool table. Obviously the whole idea of doing this is a pool room. Um, but I also wanted to utilise this area here. So I guess what just ha has turned up uh, interrupting our video recording. I believe these are the hinges. So let's get the shelving unit finished. Or at least mostly finished. Right guys, just thought I'd show you what I've built here. Um, so we've basically just cut some pieces of wood um, onto here. There are, I think it's about 22 mil thick. And I've just slotted some shelves on obviously the, the brackets. You have a lot, you've got some brackets there, under there, under there, and under there. And I've got space for one more as well. And I've put it around the electric box and also managed to put the CCTV system in situ on the top there with plenty of room if you wanted to put a bigger TV and essentially that's how it's looking guys so obviously that's the shelving unit I've inputted and um, obviously just a recap that I've plywooded everything else And we're pretty much done in here, just a lot of tidying up to do. Um, so I just thought I'd give you a bit of a recap on the shelving unit. It takes longer than you think these things do. You think, ah, it'll just take an hour, and before you realise it, three, four hours have gone. So I thought I'd just show you my shelving unit that I've installed. Right guys, I thought I'd just show you this. It doesn't look pretty, I know, but essentially all it is, is a little hump underneath the garage door. Because it might sound daft, but we're actually getting water ingress during the winter that comes underneath the bloody door. Now, there are other devices and things you can buy uh, to solve this problem, such as uh, like a rubber seal thing that goes underneath. But that costs quite a bit of money, so I'm just using a bit of cement here and doing a bit of a hump, literally, as you can see. So, um, that should stop the water getting in, hopefully. Um, bit of a barrier. Right, guys, just showing you what I've done here. Um, so. I sort of pushed it towards the door this time a bit further in. It was easier to do it on the inside than on the outside. And, and essentially, that's all I've done. Um, so, what I need to do is let that set for a couple of hours, not completely. I've done that be before in other construction projects I've done. And then you end up having to grind it out. Um, so, basically it's a one-to-one -one mix of cement. Um, and it's really just there to stop water penetrating underneath the door um, and that's more or less where the water is coming in from so I thought I'd just show you what I've done here uh, we have some cement there angled uh, to stop water ingress between the panels and the concrete floor um, that should be done properly by a proper garage firm 
Unfortunately, then the garages did a crap job, and I had to do it, mis do a, a, a more or less redo it, do it myself. So obviously, you can see I've done it there as well. So similar sort of idea here. Um, married up to the door. Um, while it's wet, it allows me the opportunity of uh, moulding it to shape, um, and then obviously once it's set properly, um, it should keep the water out. Um, but that's just in, in essence what we've been doing here. Right guys, so I'm just showing you the finished article. I know it's dark, but um, I thought I'd just show you what it looks like. Um, so I've allowed it to set a little bit. Right guys, I just wanted to give you a closer up look to have a look on the inside. Um, it was a bit messy the other time. So, obviously you can see I put in a concrete uh, cement barrier there uh, to keep the weather out. Over here, um, obviously I put this uh, cement barrier near the garage door. And uh, as you can see, I've done a fairly decent job on the insulation. Um, a new addition that we've got is a nice little shelf with a bit of plywood. We have a nice speaker, a Bluetooth speaker that is. Um, thought it'd be interesting to have a little nice area there. Um, and essentially, that's where we're at at the moment. Um, so, what I'm going to do is on the floor here is get some the that blue um, gym matting you can get put that on there, I did have some black stuff um, over time it does sort of lift up so it might be an idea to consider gluing the sections in between where they join, um, obviously it's a bit messy in here um, and obviously I need to sort of tidy this all up but we're getting there, we're getting there uh, one last piece over here that I want to do with the doorway is quite simply put is insulate the door so I've got some 25 mil we're going to put there to insulate the door as much as we can obviously it won't be 100% and then if the need arises I could always put a plywood door over the top as well so I thought I'd just show you what we're doing there So over here we've got polystyrene 100mm, um, uh, that's 10cm thick um, sheets. Now you need 10cm equal to uh, Celotex which is 50mm because it's uh, more denser than Celotex and Kingspan stuff is. However, if you get it cheap enough, it's a lot cheaper. So basically, I did actually order five sheets and they've sent six for £150 and these are 2.4 metres by 1.2. Hello guys, so I just thought I'd give you an update on what I've done in the garage. So here is a support structure that's covering the uh, door. Um, I wanted to keep it semi-removable. What, what I mean is it has the ability to be removed off the wall. Um, if I need access to use the front door for whatever reason. So I thought I'd just show you the structure that I've done. So I've used these brackets as you can see here. I've used 60mm screw into the 12mm um, plywood and 25mm into the actual uh, treated lumber that we've got on here which is 22mm uh, um, thick wood, uh, treated lumber um, and uh, but obviously I'll put some supports just to support the wood a little bit now it does wobble a bit I must admit I have attached it to the roof as well we've used those um, self tapping screws in here uh, which is 60 mil that, that goes vertically at an angle into the wood here um, seen a few youtubers do it that way so that's how I've done it same here I had to be really careful though because I, although there is 40 millimeter um, insulation board I didn't want to risk going anywhere near the, the roof um, structure because obviously it would pierce the concrete panels and I didn't want to do that so I had to be really careful and mindful how far I went in 
Um, so essentially that's what we've done here. It's just a basic structure. Um, over here, with this piece of wood here, I put some small bolts through. Uh, if we go over here, you should be able to see I've used like a square nut on the other end to secure it in place. Um, and that goes all the way to the bottom of the, of, on the ground. Right guys, I thought I'd just show you what I'm up to now. So I've got these polystyrene boards put in, into position. Um, it was some job getting it in here, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Right guys, I thought I'd just show you what, well, what we've been up to today. Um, so I've been building this studded frame. 22 millimeter thick, treated lumber most of it is. Um, I thought I'd just show you what I've been up to to create it. So obviously we've got four sections, actually five sections, connecting it to the roof. Obviously I've reinforced it as much as I can. Um, we did have some brackets on, however I've taken them off. The reason I've taken them off on this side, there are some brackets on the other side. I don't know if you can see the brackets there, but there are some brackets on that side there. Um, so when I put the plywood it'll go flat because uh, the brackets protrude out a little bit so I just took them off I thought we put some supports in to support the wood as you can see there um, and take that bracket off and then put the plywood on um, so essentially I've done a bit more reinforcement uh, put a piece of wood here obviously we can put our plywood and drill it into that section there um, and that's what I've done over here um, another one over this section here uh, I may put another piece on here, potentially, um, and obviously you can see the styrofoam, uh, which is there. This is uh, industrial uh, polystyrene, basically, uh, which I'm going to glue now on to these beams. Now, one thing you probably notice is it's not that sturdy it is a bit of flex there when i move it um now obviously we have screwed it together but it's just like a temporary structure really so in the event we want to uh have access to the big door at the front of the garage we can pull this out and it'll still be usable um so the next stage is i'm going to uh use some dry fix pink grip foam so the next stage is to use this uh, pink grip um, dry fix expanding foam basically it's just like expanding foam except it's a bit more stickier um, and it takes a little bit longer to go off a little bit but one thing I have noted is this they claim you need to wait four minutes before you apply it um, anything onto it that is um, I've noticed in warm weather reduce that time to two minutes because it does seem um, after four minutes in, in hot weather this stuff um, gets firm quite quick so word of warning give yourself plenty of time um, and if it need to be honest with you just get it stick together as soon as you think it's uh, uh, time to do that basically so that's what we're going to do I'm going to start sticking this to the uh, the wood now and uh, let's get on with that. Right guys, I thought I'd just show you what I've done. Um, so I've just been cutting up all this uh, uh, styrofoam, um, polyurethane I think I call it. Um, so I've put three full boards in that are 240 by 120 but I did cut them down a little bit on the top. Um, and then I just got the offcuts and built, in effect, just bricked it with bricks of uh, polystyrene. Um, obviously, we've got the structure here. It's a bit more sturdy than it was. Um, and I've also foamed it in. Now, I've used the dry fix pink grip over here. To be honest, it's not that much different to normal um building um expanding foam if i'm honest with you so save yourself a bit of money and just get 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 that um so i foamed it all in i'm just gonna foam in these bricks a little bit uh just to add a bit of stability there's a few gaps obviously 
um, and then this is completely done in terms of insulated it's completely insulated the only thing you might want to do is consider putting some ventilation vent in there which I can always do later it's not a major issue at the moment um, and put one at the end there as well at some point but I just wanted to show you yeah? obviously we've got some uh, five mil uh, plywood that I'm going to ply that with it doesn't have to be super strong and I just thought I'd show you the progress so far um, you, to, to cut the angles can be difficult and challenging um, if you're wondering how to cut your angles to try and get them roughly about what I've done here quite simply get a tape measure uh, measure there measure there to a certain point um, gives you an angle then just uh, mark it off and, and then cut it and it should give you a rough a rough uh, angle for what you want um, essentially that's what we've done here um, so I thought I'd just show you the the bricking that I've done with the blocks these are 10 centimeter thick you couldn't really do this with 50 mil um, you do need them to be substantially quite thick um, so if I just show you how thick they are that's how thick these blocks are very thick um, so it's, it's like building a brick wall really with this stuff so I just wanted to give you a rough idea where we're at um, and then we just need to do a lot of cleaning up now right ladies and gentlemen I thought I'd show you the finished product so obviously you can see I've lined it with the five millimeter um, plywood um, and done a reasonable good job of uh, fitting it I think as you can see it fits quite nicely and I just wanted to give you a bit of a show and tell of it finished obviously you've seen me do an ongoing project of getting this done I think we're kind of there so let me give you a, a more of a substantial view in a minute but yeah, I would say it's cost me a fair amount of money in plywood. So I've used about, I'd say about four sheets to do this. The average £23 each. So at least near, near enough £90. So I just thought I'd give you a bit of a show and tell. Here you can see from a, a more of a further back. And I think it looks alright really and uh, that's more or less that part done so it's just a bit of a clean up and I can say we've pretty much finished the only thing I may do obviously it's a bit of a mess here um, is put some of those interlocking um, gym mats on the floor um, just to give a bit of insulation because obviously it's concrete floor um, and make it look a lot nicer So I've got some vapour barrier here ready to go on the floor so I'm just going to pull up the foam sheets and uh, put that down onto the concrete. So basically we've got some PVA um, um, concrete sealer put on and I'm going to put that on just to uh, give it a bit of a vapour barrier to stop like moisture coming up through the concrete. Um, so that's what we're doing at the moment. So, I've uh, got the end part done. It takes a bit of work, this does, because it's really thick stuff. So, I'm just going to start laying down some more of the EVA sheets we have here. Um, this is 10 millimeter, 1 centimeter thick EVA foam. It's not designed to take heavy weights. However, you can put things on top of this, such as uh, rubber sheets and that's what we're going to be doing next and um, hopefully I've got some of what I need um, so let's just get this sorted out right guys so I finally got the floor finished uh, using the e EVA form um, so I thought I'd just show you what I've done um, the majority of it is cut um, along the edges 
um, to be as straight as I could get it. Apart from a little area under here where the, the, they weren't quite long enough. So there's a little tiny gap there, but I'm not too bothered about that. As long as it's small and straight. I've got a straight line there. Another straight line going across the, the wood raised flooring that we've got here. You might be asking why am I doing all this? Well, I just want to have a solid foundation floor. Um, but with some form of insulation, you know, to stop um, the cold coming through the actual uh, cement concrete that's been laid. Um, so what I'm going to do next is put a second layer of uh, rubber sheets on top and then anything heavy will squish the EVA foam underneath. So obviously that's what we've done here so far. I thought I'd uh, show you around. And yeah, it's coming along nicely. Let me know what you guys think. Right guys, just had a delivery, so let's have a look. So, we have a rubber mat here, which is made of recycled rubber. Now, be careful about buying some of these, because some of these from certain companies will smell a lot, and others won't. It depends on the quality that you're buying. So, um, this is one meter by one meter, two centimeters thick, that's 20 millimeters, and it's basically uh, hard rubber on top of the EVA. And what's underneath that is a moisture barrier sheet, and underneath that is a bed of concrete. Um, it's not completely level in here, uh, because the concrete is slightly raised at that end, and slightly raised at this end. The reason for that is when this garage was made um, it was extended in width. Um, it was actually on we, the ripped down an old garage, put a newer one in its place but made it wider and a bit longer. Um, so that's the reason why there was a, a slight bit of raised bit there and what I had to do is fill it in with, with my own concrete to try and level it. Unfortunately I didn't do a fantastic job of making it completely level. You could always use um, a leveler compound um, but I didn't have a lot of good experience with that stuff because if you've checked my other videos it does have a habit in cold temperatures to crack and that's why I had to start all over again and put a concrete bed down instead. So here is um, a rubber mat from uh, Net World Sports, um, got it on the internet. Um, I, my other stuff that I got, you've probably seen a previous video where I bought some stuff and it was completely destroyed by Hermes. Um, that was from uh, Arc Mats, um, Arc Max Solutions on eBay. Um, the, it wasn't very good stuff. This is a lot better and it doesn't smell. Um, and that's another thing you need, need to take into com consideration when you buy stuff like this. Um, if you get good quality, it won't have a, a horrible odour. However, if you buy really cheap, it will. And you'll need to weather it to get rid of that smell. Um, so, we put this on the floor just to see how it's going to fit. And I just want to really put, get it laid down, really. And what's great about it, when you buy it in one metre square, is you can literally just lay it down. And that's it. So, that's what I'm going to do. Lay it down and get on with it. Right guys, so I've just laid the uh, rubber gym mats down um, and this is the end result. Obviously you can see it's not a bad job. Um, there is a little bit of a gap down here but um, I'll try and sort that out later on. But um, I just wanted to show you the end result. So you can see they are a meter square and you know what, I pretty much bang on. Um, it's about two metre wide this, this little area here and um, since they're a metre each two of them two metres seems to do the job obviously I had to cut these ones down here because uh, it's a bit, a bit of small area and there's a bit more of a challenge here where I put that little cement step there to support the actual uh, frame um, so I had to cut around that and then back onto the plywood and along um, but I just wanted to show you that. Um, 
So essentially, what tools you'll need will be like a rubber mallet, ruler, a Stanley knife, maybe a chisel just to move them about, wedge them a little bit if you need to, um, and a, a, a sharpie and a um, tape measure and a piece of wood. So it's important that you have a piece of wood and you just basically cut it over that so you don't cut into your nice pieces you've already laid down. So essentially that's that. Um, we'll do a bit, a bit of a big reveal video as well. But I just wanted to show you how the progress is going. Obviously we've got our shelving unit there with the CCTV system. Um, obviously another shelving unit I put up here as well um, just to give me a place to put things. Um, and then obviously we've got the bench which is going over there and we need to sort out all this mess as well but um, essentially we're getting there um, pretty much it'll be done by the weekend hopefully um, so yeah that's, that's that's it done guys just wanted to show you the majority of where we're at literally it's just a big tidy up and we're finished So guys, what have I been doing for the past couple of weeks, you might be asking. Well, I've been wanting to put an internal door in. It adds insulation, insulation in terms of making the room warmer and the wood is a good insulator. Um, it's just as good as using insulation board like we've got here on the metal door. However, uh, wood does tend to be quite expensive and that's why log cabins don't tend to have um, insulation in them. Um, but then again you can always add it if you want extra insulation value. So what I've been doing is trying to find a door that would fit. Unfortunately when I found various doors I realised that these metal support supports for the garage door uh, was in the way because if I just shut that as you can see bang it's in the way. So I went for a bifolding door here so obviously it's bifolding and um, it folds in half and it allows it to clear and shut. So obviously I have treated this door, it cost me about £94 from Wix's, it's a UK uh, DIY retailer, uh, their delivery charges are quite reasonable, I think they tend to charge about £7 where other companies charge a lot more than that. Um, I got some heavy duty um, um, hinges off Amazon, um, I think they're called Exfort and they are serious heavy duty ones. Um, so I got three of them but I thought I only need two for such a small door. Um, I put a new night lock on so we can actually lock uh, the door. Uh, one modification I had to make uh, to this door was I had to basically sand a little area here because the door handle for the metal door gets in the way uh, as you can see here if we just shut that it does get in the way a little bit so I just basically got a belt sander and sanded that out and I've also treated the sides as well um, um, I had some handles lying around for uh, obviously um, sheds and I thought I was going to put like a a knob, um, a, you know, a, a wood knob on there just to add to the, the wood colour. Um, but then I had these lying around and thought, oh, well, I might as well just use them. So I attached them to the door and I got one of these night locks as well. So obviously it adds extra uh, security, obviously, to the whole thing. So I can lock the garage door. I've got another lock for, the, for a, a gate and obviously uh, one of these night locks for um, the actual door. 
So essentially that's what I've been working on. You have to be really careful though. The problem I had was I was cutting the door down so much that um, I'm, I sort of weakened it quite a bit. So that was something I had to think about when I was trying to cut down the door because you can only cut the door down to a certain size before it's pretty much useless really. So I think I've gone to the bare minimum that I could get away with. So essentially that's the bifolding door. It, it seems to look nice and I thought I'd just show you what I've been doing really. Um, basically sanding it down a lot and making making sure it fits and and uh, that's essentially what we've been doing in the garage conversion. Um, so look out for the final reveal video guys. We're pretty much finished. I'm waiting for some uh, more mats to turn up uh, because the square ones that I got from uh, James Supplier the, they are a bit smaller than they claimed it to be. Uh, actually, 95 centimeters, not uh, 100 centimeters like they claimed they were. So I've asked them to send me another one. This is the third time they sent me another one um, to see if it will fit uh, this area here. Because obviously you can see there. I don't know if you can tell, but there there is a gap there. So we're going to sort that out, um, and uh, I'll do that in another video. But there you go guys, so just a quick little brief look around, this isn't the final reveal video guys, I just wanted to show you what I've been up to, um, and I think you can pretty much say it's coming along. Um, it feels a lot warmer, now before when this area here was not uh, done, I was using that heater there, and there's another heater over here, that, that big uh, white one there. And it still was very drafty at this end because I was losing a ton of heat. I've not got that heater on, and just got got the uh, the uh, the white one on there, and it feels a lot warmer in this room. So there you go, guys. So look out for the big reveal. And uh, yeah, the only thing I have done a little bit different here is put a little shelf on there for a Bluetooth speaker. Nice little. Uh, uh, Vido speaker that is but there you go guys thanks for watching and uh, check out all the other insta uh, in install videos that I've done put in the playlist on how to do this entire project from start to finish I recommend you watch all of them and then you'll know how to do it because when I started there was very little information out there so thanks for watching and have a nice day Right guys, I'm just outside insulating the door now with some uh, 25 uh, millimetre um, insulation board. Um, so I basically I've put quite a bit of it on there um, in between these metal beams that go across. Um, and then around the lock, I'm, I managed to get the company to install some new bolts to secure the lock in place. And then here, I'm just filling a bit of expanding foam in, in the gap and void. It's not pretty, but we'll, we'll tidy that up. And then, then what I'll do is I'll just put some uh, aluminium tape on there to finish it off. Uh, so I thought I'd just show you what I've been up to outside. So there you go. Right guys, so what I've done here is I've just framed the door with 25mm uh, insulation board, I've got it off the eBay, it's very similar to your Celotex and Kingspan stuff um, and essentially I've just framed the metal frame of the door with that uh, insulation board and then got some aluminium tape and gone round the edges obviously to make it look pretty. Um, in terms of the lock I put a bit of um, expanding foam around there to fill a gap in and obviously you can see that that mechanism now works to open and lock the door obviously that's and then down there at the bottom so yeah so essentially that's the uh, outer door completed and we are finished now the garage is fully converted um, and obviously uh, I just wanted to show you this section of the door uh, make it look nice and pretty 
Um, you can buy this uh, aluminium tape quite cheaply off uh, many sites. Only costs you about about ten, five to ten pound for a roll, um, and it just takes a bit of time putting it on, really. Um, so is this going to be completely insulated? Not completely. There are a few like gaps. Obviously, it's a metal door. A few areas where I couldn't put insulation in. But nevertheless, that's what we've done. Hope you like it. Um, so essentially, we've got this door here, which shuts, as you can see, uh, which insulates the the garage somewhat in terms of the door. And then, obviously, I've got my second door which is wood that we can shut and obviously that, that gains us some extra insulation around the door as well so I thought I'd just show you that so basically this is the uh, bifolding door which I cut to size uh, and it, it opens up like that and then obviously that's the folded door and this is the internal door obviously uh, as you can see, it opens up nicely and uh, we have some decent insulation around the door now. Um, obviously I do have some insulation, I don't know if you can see the light's quite dark here, but I do have some insulation on the inside there running down. Um, and I think we've got some on here as well. So obviously we've fully insulated this as much as possible. Um, and that's it really so again guys thank you for watching my videos I do appreciate um, that's obviously the metal door and uh, hope you found these videos informative and remember to like the video subscribe and don't forget that we have a massive playlist showing you everything that I've done obviously this is the garage Thought I'd just give you a quick, brief show and tell. Um, yeah, and uh, this is what we've done in the garage uh, to uh, convert the garage into this lovely play area. So basically, I have a workshop area here with some new shelves. Um, obviously, uh, rubber floor matting for you know, like a um, little mini little gym area. And then over here is the main pool room. Uh, we've got TV um, and, and lots of power sockets and lights and that sort of thing. And uh, over here I have lots of different pools. Put, sorry, lots of different pool cues and, you know, lots of different things to use. And lots of different balls as well. Many types of different types of balls. Amorif mainly because they're good quality. Uh, you got your TV seats uh even a nice little clock over there obviously the dining room lights that are not on at the moment and pool table lights so yeah it's a nice little area um just to chill out call it a man cave call it a, a mini gym a pool room or at some point if you wanted to get rid of that you could convert this to anything you want whether it be like a a, a bigger gym uh, mini office, um, playroom for kids, whatever, you know, it would be nice, I think. Um, so I, I reckon I've spent probably in, in excess of £10,000, which is a lot of money, but it's taken a lot of work, obviously. Um, and we're done, finally done. So remember, guys, I do appreciate you watching. Hope you found these videos informative and helpful and go to the playlist to see how it all started from from day one up to the present that it's all there for you to watch um i've done it in uh, little bites in parts as well as uh, a whole um one hour and 40 minute video which doesn't inc it have all the recent stuff that i've done i'll put that into maybe a, a second part so you can see what i've done and put that together in a, a nice little video and and there you go guys anyway i just wanted to say a big thank you for watching and i hope you uh, enjoyed the videos of me showing you around the garage conversion uh, it's been hard work 
Uh, but I think I think you would probably agree it was well worth it. Anyway, have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. So there you go guys, that's it really, um, it's been a long haul, um, so we basically spent approximately £10,000 doing this, um, basically all the plywood has cost a fortune, when you consider each sheet costs £30 and you've got to do something like, I don't know, between 15 and 20 sheets, it's a lot of money, and then the, the insulation board it is something in the region of close to a thousand pound itself um, and then obviously your flooring, your tools, uh, lights, insulating the roof, um, your various bits and bobs such as such as your pool table and your pool balls and your various other things that are add-ons to what you want to do in here. It, I, think it, I think if um, I want doing obviously a pool table thing and there was it was like an office it probably would have worked out maybe a thousand pound cheaper because um, I got a really good deal on this pool table which is a beach pool table uh, Prince's one and I think it cost uh, 500 pound used off eBay now they're, they go for about 1500 pound um, and then obviously all the pool cues got them like really cheap off eBay um, so eBay is a good source for getting cheap stuff, but not necessarily quality stuff, um, unless uh, you're willing to pay quite a bit for it. Um, and then obviously we got the gym flooring that I put down. That was wasn't cheap. You know this this uh, two centimeter thick, uh, one meter square pieces. Um, I think I got eight of them, and that cost about two hundred and some pound. Um, and the lights, obviously, uh, the pool lights, they were about £100. Um, the uh, um, dining room lights, they were £30. Um, obviously, the TV, that was about £150. Quid. Um, the, the aerial system, that was about £60. And then I had to buy various tools, drills. Um, a belt sander is invaluable. So, if you're going to do a project like this, get yourself a belt sander for definite, because that saved me a ton of time and effort and work. Um, and obviously drills, uh, drill bits, I've gone through a ton of drill bits, screws shearing off, um, you know, it's just so many things, it's hard for me to go through every single thing in terms of costs, um, because I've literally spent a fortune, um, so go to that cost video, I think that'll be helpful in giving you an idea. Um, one thing that I had to do that is pretty much unique, I think, is when I put the battens on the wall I had to use two brackets that held the, the batten in place that's attached to uh, holes in the concrete panels and it holds the battens like that with two brackets and I had to bend the brackets a little bit um, because there were the contoured grooves in, in the panels were at an angle um, so you know you can you can see that in the videos guys go and go and watch them because they're going to be really helpful i've created a massive playlist with all the videos you need to do this everything i go through such as costs how to install your brackets how to put the buttons in how to put the insulation in um, the false wall that i built there in front of the garage door um, I decided to do that out of polystyrene sheets instead of uh, Kingspan just because it was easy to get that delivered where all the companies that were going to in regards to Kingspan wanted a massive delivery charge. Um, it's ironic that the same sort of size but thicker in polystyrene was actually free to get delivered rather than Kingspan which they wanted a big 30 to 50 pound delivery charge just to get like one sheet delivered where I needed to finish it, you know. Um, so essentially, it's been a long-winded project. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I urge you to go and watch all of them um, because the biggest thing for me when I was doing this is there was no informative information on the internet or on YouTube on how to do this. Absolutely nothing. Um, there was a Compton 
garages um, website with two pictures of that someone had done this but didn't actually show you how it was done and I think there was a, a, a YouTuber called The Renovation People and they'd uh, done something with a garage in terms of making a, like a mini office but they didn't really show you how they installed things, how they put it in which isn't very helpful for people. I don't know why people want to create videos um, on something they've done without showing you the steps it took to do that. Um, in hindsight, um, I think I should have put some um, um, concrete um, on the floor at an angle um, where, where the concrete panels join the floor, like so, um, just to stop any moisture coming through underneath. Um, now the garage company had done that but they didn't do a very good job of it. Um, this is the Denton garage and it wasn't very square either. So when I put the uh, wood on the roof I found that I had to cut the wood um, at angles, at weird shapes because it just was not square. Um, so that was quite frustrating and very annoying that I had to you know, basically every piece of wood I was cutting, I was having to measure it and try it and see if it fit. Here's a tip guys, don't cut your wood precisely, leave yourself a little bit of play and then put it up against the garage um, metal struts that, are, that we've got supporting the roof and see if it fits. And if it doesn't quite fit, then you know you need to cut a little bit off it, um, it's better to cut or too much than too little and then leave a massive gap. Um, in terms of what I did with the insulation in the roof, um, I just basically got, got a, a nail and hammer and uh, banged it in, in place and, and let the nails hold the actual um, insulation up and then I got a can of expanding foam and just joined the gaps and allowed it to bind together and give you a strong bond and it would allow the actual insulation to basically get stuck in place and it won't move because of compression. Compression is something I use quite a bit, especially with the rubber mats here. Um, and it's been a long windy project. Uh, it's taken me the best part of two years and as you can see it looks nice and it's a, a little a nice job I think I've done. Um, so essentially that's the actual uh, pool room stroke um, workshop and um, mini gym. Uh, so we created some extra storage over there and over there by the CCTV monitor and um, so this room is ready to be used regularly and it is a lot warmer in here now. Now we've managed to get that wall sorted out as well as the garage false wall. Now some people have said have you got any sort of form of ventilation? I, I didn't think about that. Um, but there are some holes where the actual garage door would actually, uh, um, you know, slide out. And I've left those holes in place to allow air to come through the, the garage door. That's one thing I noticed, guys, um, that where the garage door is, I noticed a lot of water was coming in during the winter. And what I had to do was put more cement down uh, at the sides of the garage door um, to try and stop that water penetrating the actual concrete panels because that's what was happening. Um, and obviously we have done some expanding foam underneath as well, which is a bit of a, a barrier to stop water penetrating the actual uh, front um, false wall that we've made. Uh, so yeah, the actual um, pieces of polystyrene that I put up there are, there, there were about, I think they worked out about um, something like £35 each and I, I did get too many actually. Um, I thought I might need five and it turns out I only needed three. Um, so, you know, um, it's sometimes better to buy too much than too little, um, especially if you want to get something finished like, like we've got in here. Um, so I don't know really if there's much more I can go through. Um, you know, I may do a further video running through the total costs because I know I've been a bit vague in this video, but this is just a big reveal video. Um, and I hope you found it informative on what it takes to do this. Um, a lot of hard work. 
Um, I've gone through a lot of wood as well. Um, it's probably a good idea to get treated wood rather than just use uh, kiln drying wood because I a lot of what I use was kiln dried wood and it was it was just so much cheaper to get. But then again, it's not 100% treated. And then obviously I I did actually do like a false. Um, floor as well. We battened the the, the actual uh, floor and then we put some XPS um, dense um, under underfloor heating foam down first um, on top of a moisture barrier because we've got a big moisture barrier on here as well because obviously concrete lets a lot of moisture through so what you want to do is you want to put a, a moisture barrier to stop that moisture coming up and on top of the XPS foam, we put some styrofoam or uh, polystyrene, and um, some. I think it was yeah, it was 18 millimeter um, plywood I put down for the floor. Uh, I did reinforce the floor with more bands where the actual pool table would be because slate is extremely heavy, and I wanted a, a very a very strong. Um, foundation even though it's out of wood um, to, to support the actual uh, the weight of this table um, so basically this is a 18 millimeter plywood floor obviously we've got um, some standard carpet on top of that um, and then so so basically the three quarters of this garage has a, a wooden battened floor with uh, plywood and then over there We've got some EVA foam where where the gym side of it is, um, and we put I think it's 10 mil 10, 10 millimeter EVA foam sheets. Have I got one here? Let me have a look. So I've used these EVA foam uh, on top of a moisture barrier, um, and then um, I put the gym rubber mats on top of that. Um, so, I think it's pretty well insulated in this room now. So if we put the heating on, I have noticed if I put the the, the small heating on, uh, the, sorry, the radio over there, the white one, uh, it does heat this room pretty quickly. Um, what what I did notice is when I was doing work in here before, and I hadn't finished that that side of the actual um, wall, the false wall as well as by the door, um, it, I had uh, two heaters on. I had that that white one and a standard black, um, you know, heater that you heat your house with over there. And it didn't really get very warm in here. Um, and I was using a lot of power to heat up, having two radiators at full blast to heat this room up. But now, because it's really well insulated. Um, you know that that white one does does the job uh, really well. Um, I think after ten or ten twenty minutes, it's really warm in here. So I just wanted to tell you through what we've done. Um, hopefully, I haven't rambled on too much in this video, but I just wanted to give you the final reveal. And yeah, I think it's been a nice project. Um, if you guys really want me to do another Q Q and A video running through the costs let me know in the comments remember to subscribe to the youtube channel and like the video share it with your friends if you think it'd be beneficial because a lot a lot of people have reached out to me with questions and asked me about things and i've done a q a video to address their questions and i think the general consensus from people is they're really impressed with what I've done here and they find it really useful and helpful for them so they can do a project like this themselves and they've got some videos out there that can guide them on what to do and what not to do. I've made some mistakes along the way, obviously, and hopefully those mistakes that I've done have helped you know what to do and what not to do. Um, you know, it's been a, a long learning process and thanks for watching, have a nice day and I hope you enjoyed uh, these videos. Remember, there is a massive playlist with everything I've done from step one to step 
is it 28 or 29, something like that. And I really seriously advise you to watch everything. Do I repeat a few things in those steps? Yes, but I do think that's helpful. It sort of reminds you on things that I, I have done or you may need to do. Um, it's been a massive project. Um, a word of wisdom or advice is get someone to help you if you can um, because it is hard work and don't, don't think like I did that you'll spend three months it'll, it'll cost you a couple of grand and that'll be it <laughs> um, I certainly did underestimate what it would cost to do this but now it's done I think it looks pretty good so Thanks for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you later. Bye bye!